I had the idea today that I wanted to make wonton soup and it's basically founded in the idea that I went to this restaurant a few weeks back and I had this amazing like really authentic Chinese wonton soup and it was like you knew it was authentic because you came into the, the shop it was like a small shop she had, the woman working there was she was alone and she had made everything by herself the wontons were made by hand and she handed you this clipboard with a piece of paper with a pen and she said write and like that's what well, she said in Swedish so she said skrib you got the menu and it was this laminated piece of paper like really simple menu you wrote what you wanted she came out read like made sure she could read what you had written down uh, she said okay went in and you had to wait a little bit and then you got your food and it was delicious I have a picture here it is I'm not gonna be able to make it myself but I I found a recipe of wonton soup that I'm not following either so it looked like this uh, I'm not gonna make that, but uh, I have that as my inspiration and it tells me a few things that I need to do. So I'm thinking I use that as my inspiration and then I make the food and we'll see what I add in as, not, as always. I'll bring forth the basics, which is garlic, ginger. We have miso because I want miso soup, gochujang, sesame oil, and my homemade chicken stock that I didn't make. It was my sister and it's not actually chicken, it's a vegan version of a chicken stock. And I don't really know what's in it, but it will help us turn everything yellow so it looks more appetizing. I saw someone ask Gordon Ramsay how you mince garlic if you don't have a garlic mincer and this was his suggestion that you crush the garlic, uh, you add salt and then you kind of run your knife over it and it should become minced garlic. So I've started doing half of that because I get lazy halfway through and I don't want to add the salt so I crush it and then cut it up and I think that turns it into more like a minced thing but I should probably start mincing it properly to not have all the chunks in my end result. And to be clear, I do own a garlic mincer, it, there, so there's no reason for me to actually learn this method, but you know. Garlic all done, and we're moving on to the ginger. I have this big chunk of ginger, I'm gonna just cut it in half and like, you know when they say use a thumb size amount of ginger? Is this a thumb size amount? It's a lot bigger than my thumb, but after I peel it, it it's kind of thumb size. My garlic, no, my ginger is also a little bit old, uh, so I have to cut off quite a lot from it and you see it's not really a vibrant color, it's kind of grayish, but it's gonna work anyway. I don't think you should be a perfectionist about using like really ripe vegetables and uh, what is it ginger? Is it a root? Is that classified as a vegetable? A spice? I don't know. Anyway, you shouldn't be too picky. If you have something and it's getting old, make sure to use it before you throw it out because there's nothing wrong with it. It might be a little thready, but I'm gonna cut it down anyway, so it's gonna be great in this food. And it's going to be the same size as the garlic, which is not good. I should really do something about that garlic. Anyway, uh, we're moving on to, we're going to fry this. I don't actually know if you're supposed to fry it, but I feel like that's going to be good. So I'll just add the oil to the pan. Uh, when that's ish hot, I add the garlic and the ginger and we're going to fry that off uh, slowly. So I don't have it up too high. You can see it bubbling. And I think it's a little, maybe it's a little too high, uh, but I'm not going to check that out because I'm going to look for the perfect uh, wooden spoon to stir this with. And that's more important than actually checking on the food. Um, I have a lot of, of different wooden spoons and 
they make me happy. So I decide on this one and then I start stirring frenetically because it's cooking a little bit too much. But I think it's okay. Um, it's difficult to, to control the heat on these on these stove tops, I think. So sometimes I just lift this thing up if I have it on too hot and I see that it's it might be burning. I think I have it on like three here, which I think that's should be okay. But sometimes that's too low and nothing happens. So I turn it up to four and then four is too hot and I have to turn it back down to three. You get the point. We'll cook this. We'll see. I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, now we can see that it's starting to brown. It's not as white anymore. It's starting to turn yellow. So it's time for the water before this really burns. Um, I get a little excited here and I add too much water. I should have stopped about halfway through because this is only one portion. What is this, like two liters of water? I, I'm never gonna be able to eat this. Well, it's time for this chicken stock. Uh, you saw how bland it was before the soup, it was looking really scary, but now with this stock it's turning yellow, and yellow is what we want. We want a deeper color, because a bland soup is never good, basically. I don't know what, really what's in the chicken stock, it's nutritional yeast, a lot of it, and some spices, and it's really resembling an actual chicken stock, even though it's vegan. So. Uh, it really saves this dish, I think. But I need a lot because I added a lot of water. Uh, then I want to cook the dumplings in the stock so that hopefully the dumplings will get flavor from the stock. So it's not only like it's not just a bland dumpling and then a stock outside, but everything kind of tastes uh, the same. Not the same, but like they have taste from each other. You, you, you get me. All we have to do now is wait for it to boil. We're starting to see a boil here, and my reasoning is that miso, uh, it's a live culture in miso because it's fermented and you don't want to heat that up too much. So I'm thinking we add it in now before the soup is too hot. Uh, so maybe the miso will still have its benefits. Gochujang is the same. I think it's pronounced gochujang. I'm sorry if it's not. Anyway, gochujang is also like a fermented paste. So I want to, I don't want to cook that too much either. So I'll just keep adding these in until I feel like the taste is good. Also my experience with miso soup tells me that miso doesn't really want to break up in water so you have to stir it a lot and you have to make sure there aren't any lumps left after adding miso to a soup. The color difference now from the beginning is amazing. This looks appetizing. That bland thing that was in the beginning does not. So we have the basics covered and now we're gonna get into the extra Asian flavors. So sesame oil is always my go-to. That gives it a depth uh, that nothing else really can. And the mirin, the rice vinegar, also gives it something else, and of course, soy sauce, which is everyone's best friend because salt is delicious. I try to taste it all the way through because when I'm cooking something, well, I always try to taste things when I cook them, I think, but when, especially when I'm cooking something that I'm not comfortable with, you just need to adjust the whole way through. And with the soup, that's possible. This just needs more sesame oil because it doesn't have that depth that it needs. 
We're also at the point where you're starting to see the results of my bad decisions from before, where I decided not to mince the garlic but keep it in pieces. Like biting into a piece of ginger I think is fine, I kind of like that, but biting into a piece of garlic is not the best. Okay, I think we're done. So we are ready for service. I have this bowl that has a crack in it, so I'm always scared to pour soup in it, but it's my best looking kind of ramen bowl, so I like to use it anyway. Uh, it's been fine so far. One of these days it's gonna break. This doesn't look too appetizing. And you see how much liquid this is? This bowl is huge. I'm never gonna be able to finish this, um, which is a shame. But I'll make sure to get all the dumplings, because maybe I can finish all of them at least. And the broth I can use for something else. This doesn't look the best. Well, it looks kind of good. I'm not going to be that way again uh, about my own food. You see, you see, saw that piece of miso there? That's what happens. And I stirred this. You saw how much I stirred it, and it still didn't work. Look, how delicious. Let's see how this turned out. I think it's quite good. It looks beautiful. The dark color of the broth, it's the miso. It's not my best miso soup, but it's miso way in it, soupy. The one I had at that restaurant wasn't miso at all. I just added miso because I like it. It's really, mm. oh, mm. it's good. It's missing that like dashi element. element. What I completely forgotten to talk about is that I learned that when you make miso soup, you have to have a kombu dashi and dashi is just the word broth. Uh, so you have a kombu, which is like an algae. You have a kombu dashi, so kombu broth that you add to your miso paste with water and then maybe a little bit of lime and you have miso soup. <laughs> it really is. It's missing the... Yeah. Like a kombu dashi would have been good. I mean, I know the chicken broth is supposed to do it, but since we didn't have chicken broth, that's not gonna fill that place, but this is good. This is really delicious. You can't really taste it. Like the gochujang is only um, a background thing. I think that adds a little bit of spice, but you can't like taste gochujang. I think that was a good addition actually. To just for chili flavor. Because I don't have fresh chili and my chili flakes aren't that spicy and I want to use my gochujang because I bought it. Mm. Okay, it was good. Let's see what the dumplings are like. I don't think these dumplings are going to be that good, but we'll see. I could have boiled them for longer. Mm. They go well. They're very seafoody. I think they have like um, algae in this. Yeah, it's not my favorite one house. They were ten crowns, so I got them, but they're not my favorite. But dipping in, dipping the dumpling in the soup, so it like it's a soup bowl. That's quite good. Oh, this is totally fine. Like, it's a good warming meal. Um, I should have, I should probably like read up on wonton soups so I can make a proper one. But this was an okay attempt. Miso soup is good. Wontons are good. Wontons and miso soup. It's not really a miso soup either. I should have added the dashi. Mm. Yeah, but it's approved. I think I like it. So it's fine. It's good. <laughs>